And thank you, you know, reminding us, uh, Jamie and Melissa, for reminding us that we are new and afresh every time that we pray for that in Jesus. Jesus makes us new. It is a new year, uh, and uh, this sermon series that we're entering into, or that we've entered into, Life at Its Best, is very much in that spirit. So hear these words from Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. This is God speaking to Jeremiah, God's prophet. Listen for the word of the Lord. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we are. We are continuing our sermon series, Life at Its Best. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a new, it is a new year. It's a new opportunity Uh, And maybe 2019 uh, will be the best year for a great many of us. A best year yet, right? The best year yet for a great many of us. And I hope that that is the case. And and that this is an opportunity for us to put our hearts and our minds in that that place, that posture, if you will, um, that we can be ready for that best year yet. And we start with the simple word, before. Before. Because um, Jeremiah lived before us. Before Jeremiah was born, God knew Jeremiah. Before. God is always before. And after, for that matter. Eugene Peterson um, speaks to us about that word before in that verse. And uh, pardon, pardon me, this is kind of an extended quote. This is, our, our, our sermon series is based on Peterson's book, uh, Running with the Horses or Run with the Horses. The subtext is life at its best. That's, that's, uh, our sermon series is inspired by this book. Uh, but listen to this quote. He's talking about that word before. He says, we think that God is an object about which we have questions. We are curious about God. We make inquiries about God. We read books about God. We get into late night bull sessions about God. We drop into church from time to time to see what is going on with God. We indulge in an occasional sunset or symphony uh, to cultivate a feeling of reverence for God. But that is not, Peterson goes on, the reality of our lives with God. Long before we ever got around to asking questions about God, God had been questioning us. Before we were formed in the womb, God knew us. We are known before we know. The fundamental mistake, he says, for many of us is to begin with ourselves and not with God. God is the center from which all life develops. That means everything we think and feel is by nature a response, and the one to whom we respond is God. We never speak the first word. We never make the first move. Now, so much of our our understanding of life, of existence, of the universe, whatever, begins with us. This is what we know. Uh, Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. He was beginning uh, to, to this, this, this uh, series of, of uh, postulates. He was, he was figuring out what he could prove. And he began with, I can prove nothing except that I am. Because I, because I am. I know me. And then he worked from that outward. You see where that begins. His understanding and, 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 and kind of a lot of Western understanding of reality begins within us. It's us-centered, us-focused, me, individual-based. I know I'm real. I'm not really sure all of you are. You can find that funny, I hope. But then he goes on from there, from himself outwardly, to, to begin to, to, to prove how he can know that other things and, and people exist and so forth and so on. Peterson is saying that's completely backwards. It doesn't start with us. It starts with God. 
God is the center of being. God is the one who made us. God is center of reality. And, and, and God is not an object of our gaze. God is not an object of our speculation. God is not some subject to bring up or not bring up. In, in, in certain gatherings to discuss with others and to, you know, again, to speculate about God. I mean, we do these things, and, it, and it's good to, to try to understand. But we so often make God something out there that we get to consider. When Jeremiah and Eugene Peterson are reminding us, God is the center of all reality, of all truth. Look at the baptism of Jesus. It's stamped with the blessing from God. Jesus is God. God is also the Father. And God is looking down upon the baptism of Jesus, right? And what do we get? We get this line from the Father. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is God-centered. This is understanding that, that all the proceedings, all the things that have taken place, God, who is, is watching, is blessing this. This is good. Why? Because God, the center of being, the center of everything, says so. It is good. Peterson would go on to ask us, do we view God as a, as, as a companion or a waiter? That is, is, is our life something that we stumble through and ask God's help in getting us through? Which is very us-focused, isn't it? Or is there more to this? Is there more going on? Is there more outside us that we get to be a part of, we get to participate in? As an aside, by the way, uh, there's an emphasis in it, and I, and I try not to be critical of other um, portions of Christian tradition, right? Other Christian traditions. It, there's an emphasis in some Christian traditions of, of sort of proving the existence of God, right? And it's this sort of very um, uh, mind-centered argument that we might go through to try to help others to, to understand there, 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 there has to be a God. And, and I, I used to really be into those conversations, and less so these days. And, and the truth is, the truth is, God is. God said, I am. I am. And, and some have to experience God to believe, to know God. And so how, I, I've been more interested of late in, in thinking about how we can help others experience the love and the power and the healing of God and less trying to argue them into faith. Some people have that gift and, and that's fine. Um, but, but what I find is sometimes when we take our conversations into that, that place where we're trying to prove somebody else is wrong when they say there is no God, um, is that we find that God becomes an object of our conversation. And we have to, to prove or defend God uh, when it, it, that becomes about us. When again, it's about God being centered. God is God is. God is the basis of life and love and all good things. And if we experience that, it's different. Anyway, that's an aside. You see, either our proof or, of God or our skepticism of God still makes it about us, you and me. But the truth is larger than us. Whether, whether we believe it, acknowledge it or not, uh, as Peterson says, there's a spiritual war in progress. Would you agree? Do you, do you see this out there? There is evil and cruelty, unhappiness and illness. There is superstition and ignorance, he says, uh, brutality and pain. God is in continuous and energetic battle against all of that. God is for life and against death. God is for love and against hate. God is for hope and against despair. God is for heaven and against hell. There is no neutral ground in the universe um, this, is, this is the war that Peterson describes as going on. When we live us-focused, we, we it's easy to miss all of that. It's easy to just look for what works for us, right? We want to get by day by day and, and, and ask God to help us get by day by day. And we're, we're, and we're missing out on this larger battle that's taking place that has enormous consequences for us and the people around us. 
Jeremiah, Peterson says, before he was born, was enlisted in God's side in this war. This spiritual war that he talks about. Again, before I formed you in the womb, God says. Before um, I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Now, Peterson points out that, that, that word we translate in, in our version of the Bible, the NRSV, uh, the Bible we use here uh, in the sanctuary, um, that word could be translated from the Hebrew also to be gave. Now hear that. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I gave you as a prophet for the nations. Now think about that. God, God gives, right? God is a giving God. God gave us life. God, gaves, uh, uh, God uh, gave us Jesus. God gave the people Jeremiah. And you know something else. God has given you to the world. Pause for a minute there and think about that. What do you, wh- how do you feel about that? How do, you, how do you feel about being given to the world? There's some good news with this and there's some bad news with this. I'm curious which side you go with on that. See, the good news is you are a gift from God to the world, and that's really powerful stuff. Probably most of us don't really believe that, by the way. But you are. In fact, I want you to say it with me. Say, we are a gift to the world. We are a gift to the world. Try to say it with more conviction next time. <laughs> but really, you can go to lunch with your friends after this and say, I am God's gift to the world. <laughs> and you can tell them your pastor's the second best preacher after John the Baptist. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, that's some good news, isn't it? I mean, you are. You, you are a gift to the world. Now, there's some tough news that comes with that. One, you don't have a choice about that. I mean, I guess you do. You could run like Jonah. Probably God's going to catch up to you <laughs> somewhere along the line. The other, the other part of that that might be tough sometimes is the responsibility, right? There's a, there's a big responsibility that comes with being sent by God. But you are. You are sent by God. The question for you, for each of us is, how? How are we going to live in that? How are we sent? And I'll tell you this, because this is, this is the whole crux of the whole sermon series, okay? So, I mean... Hear this, if you hear nothing else, all month. How you answer that question will be the secret to living life at its best for you. How do you answer the question, what was I sent by God into this world to do? Because if you find the answer to that question, you will find life at its best. Maybe not life at its easiest, maybe not life at its most, you know, earthly, abundant, but you will find life at its best, at its richest, at its fullest, at its, at its best. It'll be there. Now, for Jeremiah specifically, that was as a prophet. Jeremiah specifically was called to be a prophet, and we think of, it's, this is... Uh, also in the commentary section of your bulletins, but we often think of prophets, they told the future, right? But more so, prophets were there to call the people to return to God or, or to challenge people in a certain way of following God that had future implications. Okay. Um, so so uh, I'm going to turn to one of my favorite theologians, uh, Linus Van Pelt, um, from the Peanuts comic strip. And Lucy and Linus are talking. Lucy says, you know what we're going to do tomorrow? Patty and Violet and I are going on a picnic. I just hope to goodness that it doesn't rain. And Linus responds, hoping to goodness is not theologically sound. Now, that, that's just a, a little bit of prophecy, isn't it? it, it he's, not, he's not necessarily talking about what's going to happen in the future, except in terms of how, um, you know, how she's going to pray, if you will. Okay? So, uh, being a prophet is, is a, 
Someone who's a prophet is someone who challenges us about how we're living now and, and then what that's going to mean for the future. And so this was Jeremiah. He was sent by God. He was given by God to the people to help them, to help them. Now it's important for us each to recognize that may or may not be your call or, or all, our call, right? There, there, there are a few things more annoying in life than self-appointed prophets, God-given prophets give life. Self-appointed prophets just try to get in everybody's business. Right? So if you have a call from God to lovingly speak the truth in love, then that's, then that's a prophetic voice that you have. And use that gift. Boldly and lovingly. Right? But if your call is something else, figure out what it is. What is your contribution in the context of the spiritual battle that's happening around us. That battle between life and death, light and darkness, good and evil. It's out there. It's out there. Where, where is our gift to be? And things shift dramatically, I want to say, in our hearts and our minds and our lives when we think that way. What shifts for you in your heart in your mind when you recognize that we are in the midst of a bigger story God's story the story of light which by the way will win over darkness how does it change things for you to recognize that your story is a part of that story that story by the way that was going on before before any of us came along. What things that seemed important before to you? What things that seemed scary? What things that seemed uncertain? What things that seemed worthwhile? What things um, that just that seemed like they were it suddenly seemed less important? when we recognize that our story is a part <clears throat> of a bigger story. So again, do you know? Do you know how your story fits into the story of God? Do you know that you, you are given by God to the world? Do you know why? Do you know what God is, is, is sending you to do and what place and what role that, that you are to be a gift, a blessing, a blessing to the world around us? And you are an, a, a great blessing as you are. But how, how can you be that blessing in context of the spiritual battle that's going on around us, the story of God that's breaking forth every day? So I'd like you to go as, as you leave, think about that. And I know some of us, we're thinking about that all the time. Some of us, maybe, maybe less so. So I challenge you to think more about it. I challenge you to think about, you know, maybe at least once this week. In some situation, somebody calls you on the phone, or you enter into a, a meeting at work, or, or um, you have a, a friend who tells you they have some kind of a problem going on, or, or people around you, or... Um, trying to navigate something difficult, think about it. Pray about it. God, I know that you're sending me into this situation as a, as a gift or a blessing. How can I be the blessing uh, that you are calling me to be? How can I um, share your light in this situation uh, when so often despair or darkness uh, might reign? And, and, and when you find that answer, you'll get a little inkling of what you are uh, to be a gift in the world doing. And as David Bowie once sang, the moment you know, you know, you know. Blessings, friends.